Hello, everyone. This is Scott Moore, and you're watching the SMC Journal podcast. This is a show where it's all about performance engineering in today's world of IT, hardware, software, testing, tuning, monitoring, events, and sometimes acquisitions of one company to another. Yes, that's right. This show today is a special episode. It's about the elephant in the room that everybody's been asking me about for several days. What do you think about the open text proposed acquisition of Microfocus? Canadian company OpenText has proposed a $6 billion purchase of Microfocus out of the UK. Uh, we're going to be sharing uh, information that has been coming out from press releases and the early articles. And then we're going to talk about what I think about it, which I, I don't know why anybody would really want to know that. But I do have some, some thoughts around it because I have been using some of the, the products uh, for a long time, and I do know a lot of people. I want to start the show by saying I have no insider information. I will tell you that the employees that I know that are in Microfocus have already told me, Scott, don't even call me. Don't ask me any questions about open text because we are not allowed to talk about it, and you should be referred to anything that's out there uh, that's available externally. So that's that's where you know we start. But that doesn't stop me from having an opinion and a big mouth. If you want the executive summary of this show, I can make it very easy for you. And I do like the fact that we don't have to rely on gimmicks to get this show to be popular and get views. But here's today's executive summary about the way that I feel so that you can move on if you need to. <laughs> Yeah, that's about it today. Um, so if that's all you need to know, then you've made it through the show. Otherwise, let's start the show by talking about our sponsors that make this happen, which do include the company we're going to talk about today, Microfocus. Let's do that now, shall we? This episode is sponsored by Microfocus and the Loadrunner Solutions family. That includes Loadrunner Professional, Enterprise, Cloud, and Developer. You know, performance matters. Did you know that Loadrunner Solutions have the largest community of practitioners in the world? Join that community at community.microfocus.com, scan the QR code, and check out the Loadrunner family page on performance engineering, as well as their YouTube playlist that we've got links for in the show notes on smcjournal.com, as well as YouTube. This episode is sponsored by StormForge. The StormForge platform focuses on AI-powered software designed to help DevOps teams release with confidence and help your IT leaders realize the promise of cloud native. That means faster innovation, higher quality, resiliency, scalability, and efficiency. Find out more at stormforge.io. Thank you sponsors for your support of the performance engineering community. So let's talk about open text and microfocus. I think the first thing that we should do is find out what has been released thus far. And let's take a look at the initial press release that I saw on August the 25th. This is the announcement that open text is set to acquire microfocus for $6 billion. It says uh, microfocus is one of the world's largest software companies with thousands of organizations as their clients. And they have approximately 2.7 billion pro forma trailing 12 months revenue uh, from the period ending April 2022. So you you hear the typical, uh, um, hey, we want to buy you. We think this is a great uh, deal by C levels, and you know this is all pre prepared stuff. But the thing that you want to look for is what are they planning next? And so why are they buying? What did they see of value in the company? And what do they plan to do next? And I'm looking for words like innovation. All right. So as we look through here, we are seeing some words that uh, recur here about uh, revenue, generating revenue and growth. We also see a lot of uh, talk about renewal revenue here. And that I think that's going to be a, a key um, as we go forward. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, the total purchase price is $6 billion, uh, inclusive of Microfocus cash and debt, and they're being uh, bought at a 2.2x of Microfocus's pro forma revenue. So what the industry thinks that they're worth, what are you making? We're buying you at you know 2.2x, which isn't really as high as uh, a lot of uh, other companies that I've seen. Um, 
obviously open text has cash and they're buying stuff but it does say that it's not just like they handed them six billion dollars uh, this acquisition is to be funded by 4.6 billion dollars in new debt and 1.3 billion in cash there's the cash and a six million dollar draw on existing revolving credit all right so um I, I see that open text, if you look at some of the history of the press releases of open text, they've actually bought a few other companies uh, and they're, they're growing through acquisitions. Uh, we would call them sort of an aggregator because they're not necessarily making new software. They're buying software and putting it all together in a large package. And this is the, the next one on the list. We have no reason to believe there won't be future acquisitions as well. A question that arises when you start looking at that is what are they going to do with it and do they know what to do with it? Um, we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, I'll also say that some of the, the people that I know um, who are employees of the company Microfocus were not even aware of this until like the afternoon uh, that it happened. In other words, they were as surprised as some of us were externally. Those of us in the QA world are kind of scratching our heads because when we think of companies that uh, are in the quality assurance space uh, and testing space, uh, software development space, open text just isn't a, a name that pops up. It's not even in the top 10 list. And I've been doing this for about 30 years. So if they had some kind of a name known for that realm, I would probably have heard of them or, or know them. So that is, you know, that's interesting. My scope that I'm discussing today obviously is not around, you know, everything in the portfolio. I'm really more concerned about the performance aspect and then more generally how the QA products uh, are affected by this. And when I say the QA products, I'm really talking about the Mercury uh, Legacy, uh, Mercury Interactive, uh, Loadrunner, Performance Center or Loadrunner Enterprise, what used to be known as Business Availability Center, Deep Diagnostic, Site Scope, uh, and then UFT Quality Center, of course, you know, all that coming into play. Uh, that is what I'm I'm wondering what is going to happen with that part of it. And I don't know that open text that that's the first thing on their mind because they're just that's not been a major component of of their success so far put it that way. Uh, let's look at a couple of other articles here. This next one is from CRN and it says, uh, upon completion of the acquisition, open text will be one of the world's largest software and cloud businesses with a tremendous marquee customer base, global scale and go to market. Well, that sounds really good. Uh, $6 billion transaction sounds big. I want to remind people that Mercury Interactive sold their portfolio to HP uh, back in the day, I believe it was on 2004, uh, they sold that at $4.5 billion. And then, I don't know if that was 2004, it might have been later than that. But that was for $4.5 billion. And then you take everything that's on top of that, that Microfocus adds to it, it's only $1.5 billion. And, and, and obviously, Microfocus was not one of the uh, names that come up when we think about uh, software testing and QA, although they had purchased other testing packages in the past, they weren't the leaders in that area. And by buying these, these Mercury products through HP, uh, we were hoping that they were going to take that, innovate and bring them back to the glory days of Mercury Interactive, which did not happen. And one of the things that we did notice in those early press releases, just like uh, today, we're looking for that word innovation. We're not really seeing that here. Uh, but we do we do know that for this Canadian based company, this is uh, probably a pretty big deal. I mean, a lot of people think of COBOL when they think of Microfocus. They think of development in in COBOL, uh, which is interesting that it actually made a, a big comeback here in the last couple of years because of what happened with uh, you know the, the pandemic and different systems that needed to be updated and 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 moved to the cloud. Uh, one of the things here um, is says Microfocus is the latest in a string of big software acquisitions for open text company last November unveiled a plan to acquire email encryption software developer Zix in an $860 million deal. Uh, and then two years ago acquired a cloud data protection developer Carbonite for $1.42 billion. And um, so, but these, 
again, these are totally disassociated from anything to do with quality or uh, that type of software development. So this it's interesting, and and nobody that I know is really asking the question is okay. What did did Open Text really see in Microfocus that was of significant value in the portfolio? Um, so we'll we'll keep going to some other articles here. This is one from TechCrunch, and this is the one that uh, has a little more opinion in it, but it it actually I think it has a lot of good insight here. Uh, it talks about uh, when Microfocus uh, bought uh, these legacy software companies like. Borland, Novell, and Cobol IT, its highest profile deal was an $8.8 .8 billion agreement in 2016. And one of the things that I want to note here is that Microfocus only bought 49.9% of that portfolio. Uh, if you go back and look at those documents online, HP Enterprise, which was split HP and HPE, HP Enterprise owned 50.1, the lion's share of uh, majority share of that portfolio, they only sold 49.1%. Um, so far, I haven't seen anything that addresses that publicly as to, to how that rolls into play. So anyway, uh, the this talks about the acquisition here, and it says, this is interesting, micro-focus, which is neither micro or focused, has run into hard times with declining revenue every year since 2018, and its stock price has dropped over 44% this year and more than 89% for the prior five years. So that may be an indicator as to why Microfocus was in uh, the running for a, a purchase, and Open Text has the cash to buy this stuff, and they're, they, they saw it as an opportunity and a good buying option. Uh, it also, I, I don't have the whole article here, but it does say that there's not a ton of crossover in the platform, in the portfolio. And that's another thing that's a sort of concerning to me is that you would think that they would have a, a portfolio that they would buy that would be naturally integrated in with what they already have to build it and and have growth by putting these things together to make two plus two equal ten instead of four uh not seeing a lot of that in a lot of the comments and and articles that are out there but let's continue to look at some of the other uh things out there on the web this is from the register which is always good for a laugh i love it because when they were talking about some of the uh apm and observability company platform acquisitions they referred to it infrastructure monitoring and testing as the ghetto of software it so thanks register for that i'm, I'm gonna give you another one of these for that so they're all i i, I kind of look at the register but not really um anyway it says that the customers will benefit from a partner that can more even more effectively help them accelerate their digital transformation efforts by unlocking the full value of their information assets and core systems. Um, it talks about them wanting to take the portfolio of Microfocus and make it cloud ready and turn it into something that sounds cloud native in here. And um, for some of the product line, Business Availability Center, uh, deep diagnostics. Those are things that for today's IT, if, if Microfocus had taken them and continued innovating, they would, you know, obviously they would still be selling a lot of it and it would already have had this digital transformation. It would be cloud. Everything would be cloud SaaS enabled. There's already been, uh, well, let me, let me finish my thought there. Those products for today's IT or moving forward in progressive IT where Kubernetes is eating the world, um, those products need to be updated, modified, changed, or done away with and, and replaced with something that's better for, uh, better suited for container-based, um, microservices-based IT infrastructure uh, and being prepared for things like the super cloud or meta cloud where it's multi-cloud hybrid environments, which we, we will talk about on another show and how that affects performance. But it's just, um, this is this is the part where it's kind of confusing to me. And, and I wonder, do, does OpenText know what to do with these 
pieces of the portfolio. We have seen in some of the, the online comments that there is, and I think this was in the investor release where there was like an investor call uh, or stockholder call, and it was a public call and um, they had a, a short PowerPoint with it as well. Uh, it was more about, we are not planning on spinning anything off. We're not planning on selling, which would be sort of the GE model and some of the other large companies model. You buy stuff, you figure out what's making money, what's not. You spin off the stuff that's not. I mean, think what happened with um, Blaze Meter. Blaze Meter got spun off after Broadcom bought it from CA. They looked at the portfolio and found out what matched their vision and what they wanted to do. The things you don't think you're going to be good at or you're not going to um, um, emphasize, you sell those or you spin them off or you shut them down and then you consolidate uh, back into a more integrated uh, portfolio. And uh, I, I don't see that that's the case here, which is another sign that there may be plans to focus more on annual maintenance renewal revenue rather than taking the products to a new level, other than saying we're moving everything to the cloud. You know, there's already LoadRunner Cloud for us performance testers, uh, you know, and there are SaaS versions of a lot of these products. Uh, I think there might have been an emphasis over the last couple of years because of the pandemic to get everything on SaaS and get everything on the cloud. So this this would actually be a good play. Uh, it has been a good play for MicroFocus to sell more SaaS at this point. So you, you have to think of all those elements that are in the mix and what the viewpoints are, because when you've got a company, obviously you have marketing who has to get the messaging out, the vision out, and then sell that vision to customers uh, to make them interested, and I say sell in terms of you know, not financial, then you actually have the actual salespeople who take that marketing and use it to create sales transactions. So sales people uh, may have a different view of, of this acquisition and how they're going to be able to sell future product and how what type of licensing they would actually sell. And then Salespeople also worry about how that's going to affect their compensation as well. Everybody does. So that kind of helps you understand the direction that the company might take as to where they plan on getting those revenues from. Uh, we've got another article out here from Dark Reading. It says, Open Text goes all in on cybersecurity size and scale with the microphone person. Now, this is something I would have not even thought about is the security play and aspect of it, which... I'm not doing security testing and, and penetration testing. And that is actually a strong point that MicroFocus had uh, when they purchased that portfolio from HPE. So the, all of the um, security penetration testing products that came from that are still very strong in the industry and still being used quite a bit by some of the leading penetration testing companies that aren't necessarily using all open source to do that. So I didn't think about that, but um, this is a, another article about that, and it, it emphasizes that in the headline. It says that both MicroFocus and OpenText has spent recent years growing by acquisition and adding this SIM and SORE vendor, which is a security-based um, product line, uh, ArcSight into its fold, along with NetIQ, Fortify, and that's the product I was actually thinking about, was Fortify, Voltage, and other products. And um, so that was a, those were the products that came from the HP Enterprise uh, spinoff. And uh, then you've got OpenText with Carbonite. So maybe they're m more uh, concerned about their security portfolio and MicroFocus brought that to the table from the application um, penetration testing uh, segment more than they were thinking about necessarily quality and performance. I'm going to share all these links. You know I will. I mention in every episode. All the links that I'm talking about today are in the show notes on the website, smcjournal.com for this episode, as well as in the YouTube text as well for the when you look at the youtube video there's there's comments in there so I, I put all these links in there this is another article that came out on august 29th it says open text micro focus deal signals a new phase of consolidation after 30 years in and around the security industry so this is another security view it's no surprise that business cycles repeat over and over again 
Uh, I've seen a number of boom and bust cycles in 2022. We've clearly transitioned to the bust part. One way to find out where we're at in the cycles is to look at mergers and acquisitions. And um, in the security business, it, he talks about this. But anyway, uh, he's talking about because we are probably headed into a downturn recession and probably in that right now, companies that are not doing well uh, or uh, they they see an opportunity, a buying opportunity, they capitalize on a merger and acquisition deal. And in some cases, it can be a big win. But we, he says here, clearly in 2022, we're seeing consolidation of bigger, less exciting companies that have missed a product cycle and have seen their competitive position wane. Now, we have do have to admit that um, in recent years, the market share for the quality products for MicroFocus, they have lost market share. And it's a tough because it's not just other commercial products that are coming after them. It's also the availability of open source that is getting better and better. And with some of the things that are coming out with the CNCF, with Cloud Native Computing Foundation, um, there are, you know, if you have the skill set and you're able to cobble together um, a, an in-house solution that best fits what you need to do without buying commercial software. Some companies do prefer that they have an added cost and an overhead cost of this to maintain those skill sets, train those people and keep it ma maintained and running. But that's, it's, it's just a moved cost at that point. Uh, but he, let's get back to this cause that's a whole rabbit trail that I could take take and uh, I'm glad James Pulley isn't here cause he would run with that. Uh, this brings up the news about open text planned acquisition of microfocus. This is where an aggregator, I mentioned that before an aggregator buys other aggregators and it is a tech version of survivor. Now, if you agree with that, I don't know. Um, but it does appear that they're just buying companies uh, for the sake of, that's how they're going to grow. That's how open text has decided to grow. Um, he also says you can't say the products of either company are market leading, but most have substantial customer bases that are eroding slowly. So the question then is, can open text reverse that trend? And are, are they capitalizing on the fact that they're, is a significant maintenance renewal revenue involved with MicroFocus. We all, everybody who's a customer of MicroFocus know that there's a, a big maintenance renewal because enterprises, it's hard for them to get off of software once they're on that software and that maintenance renewal comes around every year and it's sort of built into the budget. And so that that's a good revenue stream, but it doesn't provide any um, avenue for innovation. So um, I don't have the... Um, external information to uh, investors and and the uh, the PowerPoint that was shared there. But I will say that on almost every slide, the word maintenance renewal and renewal money, the money, the revenue that comes from renewals was emphasized. I never saw innovation other than saying, we're going to take and move this stuff up to the cloud. You know, that that's basically it. I'm not sure that that's the kind of innovation that we're looking for. Other thing is, I don't really see anything that emphasizes the quality aspect of this, the, the how the Mercury legacy products are going to be affected by this. So I, I honestly believe this is okay. Now we get to my part of what I think. I don't think open text is thinking about QA testing or performance. They're getting that. And it's sort of like a great, it's been added to it. I don't see that as a main emphasis. If it's anything, it's probably the security portfolio. Uh, it's probably growth for the sake of growth in a downturn. Will they take the pro any of these products that you and I as performance testers know and love and do something amazing with them? From early indications, from what's been written and talked about, I don't see that as the case. All right. So who does that benefit? It benefits the competition to MicroFocus today in that area. So if you're a another vendor, a maker of commercial software products that do functional automation testing, uh, uh, performance and automated performance, load testing, stress testing, um, and even some of the, the monitoring. I think the monitoring as it's turned over to observability is now a whole new realm. We know that the Gartner observability 
um, platform uh, Magic Quadrant that was released, Microfocus isn't even on the list. Uh, they used to be in the top uh, tier back in the BAC days, but those are, are long gone. Uh, and we also know that Gartner doesn't really isolate performance testing in their Magic Quadrant. They just have sort of a, a quality assurance area. And so there's no way to even rate any of this. All we know is that uh, as long as there are enterprise customers, they will need load runners functionality, and there will always be a renewal there uh, in income to a company who owns load runner. It still uh, is a, one of the flagship products that came from Mercury. So I don't expect that to necessarily change overnight. I don't expect enterprises to, to drop them, but I do see this as an opportunity for some of the other players to jump in and say, if we could meet all of the functionality or, or as much of the functionality as m most enterprises need today, we could fill that gap and displace load runner, or we could displace uh, quality center, for example. And, and, and that continues to erode the market share down. So, if we go back to the Microfocus purchase, it it's really it was Microfocus's game to lose on market share, especially with Loadrunner. I mean, they had such a strong product and a strong market share, it was just their game to lose. Unfortunately, it when you've got a big company, um, it, it's like moving a tank. It's very difficult to do, but once you've done it, you've actually made it, you've done something amazing by moving it, even if you just move it a couple of feet. So before you or me or anybody else goes and tries to criticize this deal or criticize anybody, I mean, you go around and, and take a six or eight billion dollar transaction and do something with it and, and make sure that you make money off of it. Uh, you take a, a two point seven billion dollar revenue generating company and you try to make a success out of it. It's not easy to do, especially when you've got all these disparate products and th now they're getting more and more. Uh, so I. I'm, I'm not saying I could do a better job. I'm just basically giving my insights on this particular area and this particular aspect. So I think from a load runner perspective, it's still going to be their game to lose. Will they continue to lose market share or will they innovate the product, bring it back up to its former glory where they were always two steps ahead of, of anybody in the competition or will it just continue to be about maintenance renewals? The early indications are it's still about maintenance renewals. I hope that's not the case. I actually hope that I'm wrong. But I, if I'm one of your competitors, Microfocus, then I'm seeing blood in the water and I am going to spend a lot of money on innovating my products to bring some very quick cycles of uh, feature sets and filling in holes, so to speak, so that we they, we as a competitor could say, um, we, we can fill that for you. You don't need to, to go to another company. I mean, some of these companies that are using Loadrunner have been on it since Mercury owned the product. And they've been through HP, HP Software, uh, Microfocus, and now, again, we've got to deal with new terms. And who knows what the pricing is going to be? Will the pricing go up? Will it go down? Will uh, will my open text basically say, let's open this up to the small and medium sized markets and, and lower all of our licensing costs so that we have more customers uh, and not just focus on the enterprise? I mean, who knows? This is the thing. This is why we're, we're just postulating here. We don't know what's going to happen. Okay. My hope is always for the positive. I always see the light at the end of the tunnel. There, there is a way to make this successful. The question is, is Open Text the right company for that? And is this going to be something that they really care about and making it uh, as, as great as it can be? Um, ha not having heard of Open Text and their affiliation with anything around performance or quality, I'm, I'm skeptical. So, I would like to know what you think about this acquisition and what you think specifically around how this is going to affect Loadrunner and any of the uh, Mercury legacy tools. It doesn't have to necessarily be performance, but that's really the scope that I want to keep it in. If if somebody were to come to me today from Open Text and say, well, Scott, what would you do if you were us with these products? I would suggest that they do spin off the Mercury line of products. I would probably spin it off into its own company and call it Mercury again and go back out there and make it um, a, a lean and mean, well-old machine 
and fund innovation into it and let it be its own thing, especially if that's not something that you care about in your main portfolio. So I'll leave you with that. I think it's a mistake that they don't spin this stuff off if they're not going to make an emphasis of it because we don't want it to just go out there and just wither on the vine uh, anymore. And um, we, we performance engineers love load runner. We, I still love using load runner and it's got some great feature sets too. And there are some new things that have popped up in load runner. We're actually going to be talking about on a, on a future show here very shortly. Um, so let's see what happens folks. Uh, and we're not going to panic, but the early indications is, is that performance and quality may not be at the top of the list for open text to innovate on. And, I would love to talk to anybody about this from open text. Once you can actually talk about it on the record. And I would also love to talk to somebody from Microfocus about your thoughts about this as well. And what are the positives? What are the negatives? What do we see the outcomes? But also I want to, you, the viewer, I'd like to hear your feedback on this as well. You can reach me at scottmore.consulting through my website. You can also reach me on LinkedIn. There's a URL to my profile as well as Twitter. I'm at load tester. And finally, you can reach me through standard email help at scottmore.consulting. I'm real easy to find. If you like this kind of content, please make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, share our videos out there, share our feed, 